And as we are doing it, that's how God will be blessing us. We will never reduce in the blessing. But rather we will be increasing in the blessing. Scripture says, He that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord. To lend means to borrow. And I prefer to borrow God than to borrow man. Because when you lend to God, He pays you with dividends. High rate of interest. Are you hear what I'm saying now? In our teaching series for this month, the month of June, the supernatural is my new realm in redemption. Our teaching is focused on engaging the supernatural power of love. Your connectivity with the supernatural is what determines your difference and your distinction in life. The supernatural is simply above the natural. The supernatural means something you cannot explain but you cannot deny it's happening. The supernatural is something that breaks every other natural law to bring about the fulfillment of God's plan for you. New birth brings us to the realm and to the class of the supernatural. Jesus said, he that is born of the flesh is flesh. And he that is born of the spirit is spirit. I am a human flesh now, but I am a super spirit. So you must understand this Because it is impossible for you to be born of the Spirit and still suffer what natural men suffer. Papa said we are not born again to suffer again. So the realm of the supernatural is the realm of exemption. It's a realm of struggle-free life is a realm of possibilities. The realm of the supernatural is the realm of control. I say to one, go, and they go, and to another, come, and they come. The realm of the supernatural is where issues are decided. Nobody assess the realm of the supernatural without a code. Nobody assess that realm without the key. In the natural realm, you can labor and still not prosper. You become what we call classifies of our head. You know, suffering is in levels. So our new birth is the beginning point of our supernatural life. So as a child of God, if you are born again, you stand to be different. That's if you are born again. You know you can be in church and not be born again. Scripture says, if a man be in Christ, not if a man be in church, If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Not if a man be in church.
the seed of God's love has been planted in our hearts by the Holy Ghost at new birth. That's why Paul said that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So the love of God is planted as a spiritual seed to develop for us the habitats for the supernatural. There is an environment that makes the supernatural to work. It is called the love of God. So if you don't have it, you don't have access code. Say with me, access code. nature determines his ultimate future. Every man's nature determines his ultimate destination. Your nature determines your future. Your nature determines your destination. The moment you are born again, the nature of God's love has been engrafted into you. It is your choice now because love is not a gift, it's a choice. You choose it. Oh, this one can love very well. Oh, this one can love very well. It's a lie. The moment you are born again, you have made a choice for the love of God. You can still be born again and be killing this gift. Walking in craftiness. Perpetual gossipers. You can be speaking in tongue and be gossiping. Blackmailers. And you still be saying, Bless you. That's not the love of God. Pretenders. I'm just telling you for your information. Can I ask him? No, 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 I'm just giving you information. in wonders without growing in love is the nature of Christ God is love he called us gods as I grow in love I grow in manifestation I grow in signs I grow in wonders love is an addiction you grow not just in nature, it becomes your habit. Because wherever someone is dwelling, he must obviously catch the habit. If love is an environment for the supernatural, if you dwell there, I hear what I'm saying now, obviously. It, you will not struggle to become it. You will not struggle to become it. So what you create around you is what determines the happenings around you. 
So the atmosphere you create determines the product you see, the product you record. The love of God in a man is what creates an invitation for the presence of God, for the manifestation of God. Love fuels behavior. It's very easy for me to know your behavior when I hear your utterance. It's very easy to know someone's behavior if he has God. Because this thing called nature, it doesn't hide. It doesn't hide. There are things you can pretend, but very soon they pop up. They don't, the thing doesn't hide. It will just bounce out. You can't walk in the supernatural without carrying an atmosphere of love. Let me say this. Love binds people together. Loving God ties you to God. And when you are tied to God, you are tied to good. You can't be tied to God and not be tied to good. When you are tied to God's love, you behave like God. You succeed like God. You command like God. That's why becoming a love personified makes you not only to behave like God, but to reflect God. God has many natures. And one undying nature of God is passion for souls. How can this man be rescued? How can this man be rescued? That is the thought of God. This man needs to be rescued. This woman needs to be delivered. That is the thought of God. And when you begin to think like God act like God, behave like God, you are his presence carrier. You are on the reach out. Nothing enhances supernatural manifestation like the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave that his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So love for souls is the strongest proof. Say with me, strongest proof of our love for God. You want to grow in signs and wonders? Very simple. Increase your love for God.
I'm aware that the word, the love for God, has been misinterpreted. Why? Because men will want to like uh, manipulate it to their advantage. But no matter how you try to manipulate it, one sign we will know whether you are walking in the love of God does the supernatural manifest around you. Because that is the proof. If what concerns God does not concern you, what concerns you will not concern God. You can't prove to love your wife if what concerns your wife does not concern you. You can't prove to love your husband if issues that concern you and your husband are being decided by people outside. Am I correct? You say you love your wife when there is a request I don't have. But when you are in the midst of your friends, pepper soup and golda, there is money for pepper soup and golda, but there is no money when you are at home. What is love? We need to define it. First John five three. First John five three. For this is the love of God that we do what? Do what? And his commandments are not what? Now hear this. Some people choose the one they will keep. The one that suits them. The one that favors them. Love is keeping God's commandment. John 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father. And he will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. The next verse. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelt in you, and shall be in you. The love of God is the greatest commandment. Your love for God will be seen in your love for humanity. If you don't love him, if you don't love God, it will show. It will show your love for humanity and your care. You can't be in love without showing it. You can't love God with mouth. You will love God with proofs. David proved his love for God by saying, I cannot withstand this mockery and insult of my God. And that was why he made up his mind that even though my brothers are trying to like a sh shy away, that I will go and fight this Goliath. It is his love for God that brought down Goliath. Hear this. True love for God is noticed. 
through love for God is identified. Through love for God cannot be hidden. Now we are talking about 52 days of encounter. And yet, some people only attended the first two days. And after that, David said, my love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. Every day, church, 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 church. Oh yeah, every day. Be apalo, be apalo, be apalo, be apalo, be apalo. Scripture say where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. If your treasures are not here, don't come. Every day, church, 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 church. This church is getting too much. My life take order from here. Your life take order from here. Your supply take order from here. Your progress take order from here. How can you taste where your life is flowing from? Jesus said unto Peter, Love it me more than this. The greatest proof God will demand from us is love. So the proof of our love towards God is being passionate for souls both in prayer and in outreach. You can't be passionate for souls and not reflect grace. You can't be passionate for souls and not reflect the unction. There is an oil that goes with compassion. Every time you are passionate for souls, God releases might to deliver, to bail them out. So if there is anything that is expected of you, is to grow in love. The love of God. The passion for souls. Passion for turnaround in the life of every one believer. Sincerely, I will not blame some people because they had a wrong foundation, wrong orientation. You know, when you are not properly taught or not properly schooled, there's every likelihood that you will misbehave well. Are you hear what I'm saying now? You will misbehave very well. Our principal nature, not secondary, our principal nature is the love of God. Paul said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now as he entered into the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that love him. There are many blessings to be assessed by growing in love. And the proof of our growing in love is being passionate more for souls. Let me say this. We are not being passionate for souls so that church will increase. We are being passionate for souls so that the wickedness of the wicked and his plan against the life of these men and women will be aborted. The wickedness of the wicked will be aborted. So if you are not passionate for souls, you are saying, let the person waste. Although there are people that have made up their mind, that have sold their conscience to the devil, that, are, that they, they must be in hell. Or oh, you don't know, there are some people that have made up their mind that they must be in hell. So those ones too, they must go to hell. Can you be praying for Lucifer now to repent? He has a permanent resident visa. 
permanent resident visa in here. So if you are not growing in love, you are not growing in God. You are not growing in God. If you are not growing in love, you are not growing in God. So our love for God is proved by our growing, our hunger, our passion, our taste to grow in love. We must be desperate for it. Let me say this. When you are passionate about someone, if they tell you that the person is living in Jalingo, you go go there. Somebody will tell you he's far. Why don't you go and say, I won't see him. I might say something to somebody. I remember one brother say he found one sister that he wants to marry. So I say, where's the sister? He says, in Jalingo. I say, wait, wait, wait. You mean all the sisters where they here? You are not see anyone. Na Jalingo, now you go... So anytime I don't see him in church, I say, where are you? He say, I'm in Jalingo. <laughs> I say, so you are not going to Jalingo as if you are going to Central Market. Jalingo is not far to him. Oh. Why? Because there is something he has found there. Hear me? Love break limits. Love break limits. You can go miles because of the one you love. And go miles. Distance others are daring, are afraid of going because there is love in your heart. Say, Man, I need to reach there. I need to reach there. <laughs> love break limits. John Wesley said, give me Scotland or I die. Well, my name is not John Wesley, but I know by the grace of God, before we leave Lafia, anywhere you go, you will hear my name. Amen. I will visibly touch impact to the point that uh, let me not say this one <laughs> so when you become a lover you enjoy what we call heaven's advantage which I want to show to you now you can't be a rescuer of men you can't be bailing men out from destruction and be destroyed by men. Wickedness. The love of God makes you indestructible. Indestructible. It makes you indestructible. So no matter what men try to do to blackmail you, gossip you, backbite you, run you down, instead of going down, you are firing up. Just firing up. And the people that are running you with their mouths 
They are going backward. You become indestructible. There is a nature that has enveloped you that makes it difficult for them to finish you. You can't finish a lover of God. There are some people that are in church because of the gossip they will carry for today's service. I'm telling you. But they forget where they are. They don't know where they are. Scripture said, The wicked shall perish at the presence. Love makes you indestructible. There is a place where manipulation does not work. Instead of you to manipulate, you become the one that is manipulated. It makes you indestructible. You become unstoppable. Can you stop God? So growing in love breaks limitations. The more you grow in love, the more limits are damaged. You damage limits. What they say you can't get, you are getting it. Where they say you can't reach, you are reaching it. Growing in love is a failure-proof shield. You can't fail. When they're expecting you to fail, you are over-succeeding. So through lovers of God, they record success in impossible places. When men are saying there is a casting down, thou shalt say there is a lifting up. I had not that uh, that uh, I saw dream when I was moved from LFC Benin, Sapele Road, as resident pastor, a church of 9,000 plus, to a church of 1,024. It's a good God on Kachan. Let's see how he will succeed. <laughs> Let's see how he will succeed. I had, not that, this one is not gossip. Yes. Let him go there and be shouting, fire, fire, fire. But they forgot that someone said, stop the prayer. Be on your way. I am going with you. Although the place is not fine, we didn't have any building like this. But someone followed me. Let me, tell, let me tell you one proof that God was with me. We recorded amazing, tearful testimonies. Tearful testimonies. Cervical cancer destroyed. Women know what I'm talking about. Breast cancer too destroyed. Kidney stone melted. A notable surgeon in the uh, uh, University of Joss. He was the one that had the challenge. A skin, a little child, the skin was decaying. Pulse was coming out. After an anointing service, she was in the overflow. Power hit her there. They've gone for skin grafting three times. It failed. After that day, the things healed back. I can't remember all the other all all deliverance cases. There are just too many. 
And not only that, my first fruit offering before I left Bini was 250 something, 256. My last first fruit before I left Rayfield was 1.5 million plus. Check the difference. Is that demotion or promotion? I'm blessed. The secret is, you can't kill my love for God. Your behavior can't change me. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Growing in love opens you up to every channel of success. Opportunities others are dying to get is placed in your hand. It's placed in your hand. It's placed in your hand. You can't grow in love and grow in life. Who you love, do you allow him to suffer for food? David said, the young lion may suffer for once. He said, but they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. No wonder scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that the Gentiles seek after shall be added to you. You will not miss it again. Yeah. When you go home today, ask yourself, do I love God? It's a question that is left for everyone. Do I love God? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Do I love God? Don't misinterpret it all. Do I love God? Prove it in your passion for souls. I know somebody say, okay, what of that person? I can't be forgiven. There are some people that have crossed the line that even God himself can't forgive them. A sin against the Holy Ghost cannot be forgiven. Go and read your Bible. Am I correct? If the person needs forgiveness, let him go and meet the Holy Ghost. You can't insult the Holy Ghost and be asking for forgiveness. You have crossed the line. You know, some people can misinterpret forgiveness because they know the Bible more than God. Read it. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sins and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. When someone is making a mockery of the anointing and the anointed, he's dying. You are going. Even when you try to like forgive the person, the person is still under a curse. There's one young man now. He's moving like a vagabond. Because all he has been doing is using his mouth to tear at the goye. To tear papa. To tear kumiyi. Eh? He's a heavyweight. The guy get weight. And you know there are people like that. They are major attack. When they stay, they begin to tear pastors. The person you are tearing is higher than you. You will be grounded. Come on. He, he will even fight you. God will be the one fighting you. Please grow in love so that you won't fall a prey to the devil. Grow in love so that you will not be a victim of Satan. Satan is looking for people that will enjoy the fire with him. Do you want to enjoy the fire? Hellfire is everlasting. 
It's not a comfortable fire. It's a torturous fire. That fire where they get chuku chuku. So you choose where you will. Growing in love is not optional if you are in this kingdom. Growing in love. If people offend you, overlook their faults. I'm a practitioner. Overlook their faults. But if I discover that Satan wants to be using you, the best thing is delete his name. Simple. You are not sent as a, a permanent escort to my destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are not a permanent escort. Your face is over. Thank God. Life continues. Instead of the person increasing hurt for you, getting you more offended, increasing bitterness for you, let him go. Let him go! Forgive him and let him go so that you can walk in love. Somebody have told me that he will not have anything to do with me. I say, thank God. Bye bye, Titi Lai Lai. Well, I'm saying, thank God, you are not my Alpha, neither are you my Omega. Jewe? You know what they call Jewe? I wish you good luck in your journey. The only thing is, I pray you arrive heaven safely. Please, walk in love. Any bitterness in, a heart, in your heart. I know this is one of the major things that is frustrating it. Just tear it down. I, let me tell you, I know anything you are trying to like feel now, I've been there before. Are you what I'm saying now? Forgiving is easy. Forgetting is a process. I'm telling you the truth. It's a process. What makes it permanent? As you grow in love, it will be fading away. Fading away. Fading away. Until you lost touch with it. Forgiving is easy. Forgetting is a process. Why? You still carry human nature. You are still in the flesh. I'm telling you the truth. You are still in the flesh. I never understood it until I listened to Dr. Mesa Otabe. Forgiving is easy. Forgetting is a process. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? As you are growing in love, it's fading away. And you know, if you don't, you'll be looking for opportunity to do evil. So please, and you know, when those thoughts begin to dwell in you, it becomes very difficult for you to manifest the nature of God's love. So as you go home today, Lord, I want to love you. God say, you want to love me? See Pastor Mike. See Pastor Benga, see Pastor Amos. See them there, see them there. Our love is proved by the people around us. It's not a, I love you, Lord. More than anything, I love. God say, no lie, see them there. Are you hearing me? <laughs> he says, see them there. See them there. Inquire now. There are people keeping malice. They say, I love you, love. Malice. Among dickies and dickiness, there are people that can't cross each other's paths. 
And when they begin to speak in tongues, like, <laughs> fake tongues. I leave one simple principle. You offend me, I must give it to you. I'm, come here, come here. You want to keep my work? Anything I can rebuke you for does not exist. Are we going to the same heaven? Are we going to the same heaven? Are you sure it's the same heaven we are going to? So when we reach heaven, hey, the bless you. Hey. <laughs> you are not going to the same heaven that I'm going. But if you are a winch, I will not spare you. Because even God himself suffered not a winch to me. I'll be praying for you. Die by fire! You are no longer a believer. You are now a winch. Please, walk in love. Tell your neighbor, walk in love. It just came to my heart now. After the service, I'm not calling anybody's name on. You know yourself. Walk up to the person. Tell him, I'm sorry. You know that word, I'm sorry. A proud man can never say it. How can they hold me and say, I'm sorry? You want me to reduce myself? You already reduced. Am I saying the truth? Scripture says, pride goeth before what? And a haughty spirit before destruction. There are people that can never say, I am sorry. They are doomed for destruction. They know the evil they have committed. I'm sorry. That word I'm sorry is a very powerful word. It heals. But some people, they will say I'm sorry. They will start again tomorrow morning. I'm sorry. They will start again. I beg. I'm advising you, run for your life. You can't be telling me I'm sorry and yet you are still tearing me again, spoiling me again. I better go with your sorry. I forgive you, go for your life. You can't be saying I'm sorry and you are repeating the same evil. Which kind of devil are you? You told me you are sorry in 2013, told me you are sorry in 2014, told me you are sorry in 2015. Are you a witch? You finish, I'm sorry, you are still committing more evil against me. Ah, you are not sorry anything. Just leave the person, let him go. I'm saying it now, after this service. The person is in this service, so go and meet the person, say, I am sorry. If it means to cry, cry. Praise God. I've wounded somebody now. Somebody's heart is pumping like uh, pure water. Please, until you do it, I say it on this altar, you will not have peace. I've said it. It will be, it will be hitting you. You will not have peace. After now, go and say, I'm sorry. Every destiny encounters lead to upgrading of destiny. In destiny, you are permitted to start low, but you are not permitted to end low. encounter begins by encountering revelation. The Lord sent a word into Jacob 
and it lighted upon Israel. Light determines flights. Light determines what? Determines what? Flight. In destiny, there are people that are crawling. There are others that are walking. There are others that are running. And there are others that are flying. What makes you a high flyer in destiny is the light you have encountered. And scripture says, for in thy light we see light. Meaning, there are people you must meet for your destiny to be lighted up. They jack you up. They upgrade your mentality. The Holy Ghost is in them. And Joshua was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses has laid his hand on him. Why? He encountered the anointing on Moses. So his destiny was upgraded. And Paul said, And I went up by revelation. Encounter in destiny begins with revelation. Revelation, revelation, revelation. There are two principal sources to secure revelation. Number one, prayer. Say to your neighbor, prayer. prayer. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee. What? And show thee what? So the things he shows, they are the things that makes your destiny great. Now he show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Anything you don't know limits your destiny. And what you know upgrades your destiny. So the altar of prayer is the altar of encounter for destiny. So if you are not a truly a praying man, what will you encounter? No wonder Satan is fighting your prayer life 247 regularly. He's angry with your prayer. In fact, he, he hates to see you pray. And because you are ignorant about it, you are even buying that this prayer thing is getting too much. It's getting too much. Why? He wants to reduce your prayer tempo. Because he knows the more you pray, the more you are lighted. The altar of prayer is the altar of revelation. You can't truly really be in prayer and God not be telling you things. You can't truly really be in prayer and God not be showing you things. It's the altar of showing. The second source of encounter, we have looked at prayer, is through the word. Through the word. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. Every time we are face to face with the word, the spirit speaks to us. If your heart is open, he speaks to you. If you are listening to a message, he speaks to you. For you to go find life, you must surround your life with lighted men. People that have access to secrets. Paul said, according to, my, to the knowledge of my mystery. He's now saying the knowledge of my mystery. 
Because God showed it to me. According to the knowledge of my mystery, there are people that have access to mystery of knowledge that unlocks and unfolds destiny. When you surround yourself with lighted men, you become lighted. I like the way Pastor Sam Ademi puts it. He said, if you surround yourself with five experts, you will become the sixth expert. Why? Because you will dwell on their knowledge and discover your own. That is why I said to myself, if I must go far in life and ministry, I must go after the tapes and books of people that have proofs. They must have discovered something which I need to know. They have something that I must go after. And if you know who has what you are looking for, go after the person. Number three. Destiny encounter is a product of contact. If you don't contact, you will not connect. If you don't connect, you will not collect. The people you are meeting now, they are either reducing your value or increasing your value. You can't miss the two. The quality of destiny is either improved by reason of people you are meeting or reduced by reason of people you are meeting. Choose the one you like. The people you are meeting now, they are either reducing your words or enhancing your words. Life is in what? Destiny is in what? That's why you can be prized. Just like a, a sister now. Take for example, any sister that lives careless, she's reducing her price. Yes, whether you like it or not. You are reducing your price. Just like that sister that shared her testimony in Shiloh and Kechi. Small girl. Now Harvard is studying her. Yeah, yeah, yeah brother cannot just say the Holy Ghost say I should marry you. She too she go tell you the Holy Ghost say you the lie. Am I saying the truth? A man of God said, water will find its own level. Go and look for your level. Before you say, Nankechi won't marry. <laughs> Where are you from? Who are your parents? What's the name of your village? Where are you schooling? Where did you school? Where are you working? She must check your CV. So that you come and you won't come and confuse her with uh, the Holy Ghost say I should come and marry you. Why didn't the Holy Ghost say you should come over and marry that sister in church? Shoe get size. Look for your size. Now hear me. If you don't add words to your destiny, you are reducing your price in life. If you are a brother or you are a sister and you are a gossiper in this church, you are reducing your price. I bet you. Nobody needs to prophesy for you. When any brother wants to marry you and they tell him, this is the person I want to marry. Eh? You don't enter one chance. <laughs> they will say it. Two of us. You don't enter one chance. Run for your life. Your family no go balance again. No, if this person enter on a house, your family don't scatter. You don't enter one chance. <laughs> I might say something to somebody. Be careful. I like the way Doctor Polenice put it. There are people you must miss, and there are people you must meet. If you meet who you are supposed to miss, you are in trouble. Hear the 
if you can't miss this too destiny increases in value when you meet the right people and destiny depreciates in value when you meet the wrong people may you not meet the wrong people if you are saying amen say better amen. amen but one thing i will not fail to tell you this morning if your destiny must progressively appreciate in value you must be going for encounter with knowledge 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 the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits and you shall know the truth and the truth you know shall set you free not only that i keep praying and asking that the god of our lord jesus christ we give unto you the spirit of revelation knowledge and understanding that you may know the hope of his calling knowledge empowers revelations upgrade destiny Rise up to your feet. Two resolutions that you must pray for this morning. Lord, I make up my mind to grow in love. I want to grow in love. Like I said before, if you are not growing in love, you will grow in life. Love is a barrier breaker. We are going to pray, Lord, I want to grow in love. And two, Lord, creates hunger in my soul for your word in the name of jesus christ lift up your voice and pray this morning lord create hunger let my soul burn for hunger for knowledge for the word lift up your voice and pray whatever has limited the love of god in your life lift up your voice and pray lord let the barrier break this morning let the barrier break this morning let the barrier break this morning whatever has limited the love of god in my life let the barrier break this morning holy ghost whatever god has not planted that is limiting my love that is limiting my growth in the love of god let the barrier break lift up your voice and cry from the depth of your heart let the barrier break let the barrier break let the barrier break let the barrier break in the name of jesus lord fuel my heart with passion for your word fuel my heart with passion for your word increase my appetite for the word increase my hunger 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 for knowledge increase my hunger for revelation in the name of jesus my destiny must not remain on the same spot my destiny must not be limited on the same spot my destiny must not be trapped on the same spot my destiny must not be remitted on the same spot lord increase my hunger lift up your voice and cry out right now whatever has limited me whatever has kept me on the same spot lord let the barrier break whatever has limited my hunger for god whatever has limited me in growing in love for god lord let the barrier break this morning let the barrier break this morning I am destined for the top. I am destined for greatness. I am destined for the high place in life. Lift up your voice and pray. Whatever has limited me, my passion for God, whatever has limited my hunger for God, Lord, let the barrier break this morning. Holy Ghost, fuel me with hunger for the word of God. Fuel me with hunger, with passion for the word of God. In 
In Jesus name we have prayed. The knowledge you encounter and the people you encounter they determine whether your destiny will count. So when you are meeting the wrong people your destiny is discounting. Your destiny is not counting. You are discounting. A discounting value. The destiny is not upgraded. I won't forget one young man that came to see me when we were in Asaba. He met one wrong sister that he said he wanted to marry. His shop enter zero. That is, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a spear part dealer. The shop level to the floor. Scripture says he that findeth a wife. But this one he found was a bad thing. The shop empty. When I mean empty, the young man came to the office and was crying. Tears was coming. A kata was oozing. He too knew that he has entered one chance. He said, Pastor, tell her, may she go. I say, you know if you tell her. <laughs> so he was dodging. I said, oh, yeah, tell the sister to call. She was just coming as if uh, she has won lottery. I sat her down. I said, oh, yeah, I repeat everything you told me. He said, Pastor, tell her now, tell her. <laughs> she could, he couldn't say it with his mouth. So I said, okay. He said, I should. So I replayed everything that the young man said. I said, is that what you said? He said, yes. He said, what else? He said, Pastor, tell her the other one. I say, okay, go. Since you come, shop don't empty. Go. You know, go marry you again. He say, you don't tell my papa. Oh. Go tell your papa, say, you say, you need to do again. Hear me? The last thing that makes destiny to be upgraded is prophetic blessing. You can't encounter prophetic blessing and be on the same spot. Before we pray that prayer, all eyes close. All eyes bow. You are here, you are not born again. But you want to make it right with Jesus. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you 